to the state of the nation. Whenever this country goes through hardship, there is always a group of people who claim to be progressive and liberal telling us how we should be fixing the problem according to their solutions, only to find out later that their real intention is to use the situation that all of us are in and make a quick buck for themselves be it through the hardships of people experienced last year or be it the war, we saw liberal vultures using this nation's misfortune turn to their fortune. A best reason example is during the Aragalia season, we saw several YouTubers coming to the foray to make a profit by portraying themselves as heroes of the poor. Some university kids came to the forefront to take the necessary pictures of them at the protest so that they could show them to their uh, recruiting universities under the title activists. Where are they now? Have they got their visas or have the students got their preferred universities? Now, back in 2006, when the internet in this country was in its infancy, online keyboard heroes were at a minimum. The go-to tool of the trade in those days was blogging. So within the Colombo liberal media circles, just like now, it was mentioning the name Rajapaksa that got the clout needed and at that time President Mahindra Rajapaksa. This is when we saw a young budding writer coming to the foray. Writer Sanjana Hathfatua was not a stranger to that circle where, whereas his ground views blogging side began a quest to fight against the mighty Rajapaksa's regime. Or at least that's what he said in a recent interview. This garnered Sanjana much recognition. The liberals praised him, saw him as a hero of the oppressed, celebrated him at local coffee shops and uplifted him at local gatherings. As the popularity of ground views went up, so did Sanjana, began expanding his horizons from a mere blogger to a keyboard crusader. If the Rajabaksas did something wrong, in comes Sanjana and his keyboard brigade to expose how things are not the way they are. With the popularity rising, Sanjana managed to get his PhD, became a special advisor to non-governmental foundations in Switzerland, and now has managed his way way down under to the land of the Kiwis in New Zealand. Why am I telling you all this? It's purely to show you the hypocrisy of these individuals who use our pain to make a gain for themselves. So what is Sanjana doing in New Zealand these days? Perhaps furthering freedom of speech efforts? Perhaps championing, championing uh, citizen journalism to a greater extent? Now, he's not just Sanjana, he's Dr. Sanjana. Sadly, that is not the case. A recent short documentary released by a New Zealand citizen journalistic website called Operation People found that Sanjana is no longer a crusader for freedom of expression, but more so another governmental tool to censor journalists in New Zealand. In Sri Lanka, fighting against the Rajapaksas and the media oppression, and in New Zealand, supporting the government to suppress journalists. He is part of what is called the Disinformation Project that pushes to censor New Zealand journalists who are not in line with the government propaganda message. Watch. From Sanjana's position as a citizen journalist and social media activist, Sanjana argues that a lack of information, the void left by what mainstream media will not cover, builds an information landscape of myth and fiction. And it is this landscape of myth and fiction that the government uses as its operating principle. I think information fuels discussion and debate. I think without information, what often happens is that myth and fiction takes over. Fiction is great as a genre that you can buy off a bookshelf. It becomes very dangerous when it becomes the operating principle for governments and uh, uh, governments to uh, base policies on. This myth and fiction generated by the lack of information, Sanjana argues, forms the bedrock for violent conflict. Uh, the lack of information, I think, is the bedrock for violent conflict, to be very honest with you. In contrast, we have seen the New Zealand version of Sanjana Hatatua, this time working closely with the New Zealand government to set their roof and propagate that narrative on government-funded mainstream media. This is quite the contrast. And it is difficult to reconcile why someone who was so passionate about countering the mainstream narratives would become the very one who was setting the mainstream narratives and contributing to the censoring of citizen journalism in New Zealand. 
It is difficult to understand why he would contribute to creating a void in the information landscape. A void, he said, would lead to myth and fiction. A type of fiction that Sanjana suggested would be used as the operating principles of government. And that's dangerous, according to Sanjana Hatatua. We open with Sanjana's rhetorical question about Gotabaya Rajapaksa. What does it mean for Sri Lanka's democracy to have this two-faced individual as president? I can't help but imagine that there is an element of projection in that question. Well, that was the short documentary produced by Operation People. Joining me now all the way from New Zealand are the makers of that short documentary, Chantal Baker and Phil Shaw. Operation People is an investigative online hub whose goal is to focus on stories and perspectives of real people without the influence of government funding. They both join me uh, via Zoom from Christchurch. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for your time. Um, first of all, Chantal, let me ask you, what was the reason that you wanted to look into Sanjana Hathoto? Thank you so much for having us on, Mahesh. The reason we wanted to look into Sanjana Hathoto was because here in New Zealand, he's actually worked for a, an agency called the Disinformation Project. They have at times been funded directly from our Prime Minister's office, and they have worked to censor voices such as myself and our company through their research. They claim that many things that in anything, any work we do, most of the work that we do that goes against the government narrative, they claim is disinformation. And so we found it very interesting when we began to look into him that he actually started at a, as a citizen journalist while here in New Zealand, he's looking to censor them. So that's why we really wanted to investigate more about who he is and why is it that our mainstream media has him on as an expert in information and uses his research to silence opposing voices. Absolutely. Uh, Phil, um, if you may. Is there anything else that you discovered during this uh, time when you were looking into Sanjana? Yeah, well, Mahesh, um, I, I understand that you guys have sort of uh, done your research on Sanjana Hatatura as well. And and I guess our, our research with the Disinformation Project here in New Zealand uh, led us down sort of a, a, a track where uh, we discovered sort of a different Sanjana over in, in Sri Lanka. Um, and it, it was really quite different to this Sanjana here in New Zealand and, and that we sort of tried to portray in, in the documentary and I, and I guess the, the point there was that while he was in Sri Lanka he was very much a citizen journalist and, and would probably be very much aligned with us here at Operation People where we're you know trying to give another perspective trying to uh, give a perspective that isn't funded by government media or have that sort of influence and and a lot of what he what he said with his citizen journalism with ground views, I, I very much align with myself, and I think he uh, spoke very well in the video that we used. Um, and, and I guess what was concerning and why I sort of dug into Sanjana uh, in the New Zealand version was it's quite the opposite to what he was saying in that video. He yes, he features on mainstream media, and, I, and I'm not too concerned with that. He he's fully entitled to do that. Um, but what, what was really interesting was the fact that he would uh, jump on to, or, or he's in this disinformation project, which is itself a, a sort of censoring organisation. Well, and it has it has that capacity, and we've, we've found recent documents, um, government documents recently, uh, in, in the fact, uh, a report that the disinformation project produced, which has a heading that indicates that they're involved with censorship. Uh, un unfortunately, the paragraph under the heading is redacted, so we don't get to see exactly what capacity uh, the disinformation project do have in censorship. However, they are they're definitely setting a narrative uh, which is enabling the government to then perform the functions of, of censorship with other departments. So he's, he's really done sort of an about turn uh, on on his his role of sort of free speech and and uh you know and free speech and democracy absolutely um guys as you know um sri lanka is currently going through a massive economic crisis and just like 
during war times, we see there are very liberal oriented individuals presenting themselves as problem solvers uh, only to capitalize on the misery of this nation. Why do you think they do this to gain a better life for themselves elsewhere in the world? Or like Sanjana seems to be a prime example of this. A common, is this a common sight in New Zealand? Yeah, well, Mahisha, that, that's another interesting question in that, yes, I, I think there is a trend of, of sort of these these more liberal-oriented uh, sort of, and a lot of times they're, they're academics, um, and they're these liberal-oriented academics that uh, do form these more uh, global or transnational NGOs and organisations, and they do travel around a wee bit. Um, and Sanjan is a prime example there. So he's he's involved with multiple projects in Sri Lanka, as you probably know, with ICT for Peace. And um, there's there's a few other organisations as well. And, you know, and then he's come over and, and studied here and now he's involved in an organisation here as well. And, and our research shows that that group is, is very much uh, has its sort of origins in, uh, well, well, not not the group per se, but definitely individuals in that group um, actually profess to uh, identify as Marxists and things like that. So they they definitely have that sort of left leaning um, element. Now I do think that groups right across the political spectrum do capitalise on on uh, issues, and um, I guess that's just the nature of communication these days and the access to information. We, we're sort of connected globally right, right around the world. And, and so I think, yes, it seems to be a big trend on the sort of very uh, left sort of collectivist side of the political spectrum, but I think it is a trend that we see right across the political spectrum as well. Uh, finally, uh, do you all think that New Zealanders would be interested in finding out more about this? Or just like in Sri Lanka, are they too completely conned by these types of individuals who might not see the truth until it's too late, how it happens here? New Zealanders are really inquisitive and they want to learn more and they're always searching for more information. And so with our page and with my channel, it grew rapidly, particularly when I was live streaming a protest we had against vaccine mandates in early of 2022. So my page took off. We had hundreds of thousands to millions of views um, consistently throughout that time. Then we found the government document that showed that they actually had requested pages of mine to be taken down. So the government's actively trying to censor voices and I think whenever that happens, people start to try and find the truth themselves and citizen journalists and reporters such as myself find that our platforms grow even more. So regardless of how many pages they try to take down, we just start new ones and they keep growing every single day because people are searching for what they believe is the truth. They want to hear different voices and different opinions. So I believe New Zealanders will really want to hear more about Sanjana and any information that you can give us to help us with our investigations would be really, really wonderful. Indeed. Um... It makes a lot of sense and, and really appreciative of the fact that you all took the time to dive into this. Uh, we have to leave it at that. Uh, that was Chantel Baker and Phil Shaw from Operation People New Zealand. Let's take a short commercial break. I'll be right back with the closing.